welcome to the project. My name is Josh, and I'm here to let you know what to expect over the next hour. In the next few minutes, our band is going to come up and play a couple songs. It's not a concert, but something that we call worship. The songs we chose talk about who God is and what he's done for us. So singing to him is a way that we can worship him. So engage in however you like. Sit, stand, sing along, put your hands up, or maybe for you it's just to listen to the lyrics and reflect on them. Nobody is here to judge you, so relax and enjoy the time. Every week we go through the Bible, and tonight, Pastor Jeff, our lead pastor, will share a message based on its truths and how it applies to our lives today. Afterwards, we'd love to get to know you and hang out, so make sure to visit the info booth in the lobby, get connected, and answer any questions you might have. Thanks again for joining us. We are so excited you're here. We invite you to stand as our band begins to play. Thank you. 
Welcome again to the project. If you're online, we're so glad you're watching too. I'm Jackson. This is Taffy, Emily, and Jay. You can all just take a seat. All right, guys. Welcome to the project. Can I just say, like, it's actually really good to see you guys, especially after this past week. Um, I don't know what this week was for you. Uh, it was interesting, especially after the Wednesday's annou announcement. Um, but yeah, it's been tough. So, like, we've been praying for you guys a lot this week as a staff. We're praying for our city and for our church. Um, and you know what? We'll take it one day at a time. But I am really grateful for tonight that we can actually be together. That's really awesome. Or if you guys are watching online, really glad you guys can watch with us and be with us as well. So my name is Amanda, one of the pastors here on staff. In the lobby, after the service, I'm going to be out at the Connect booth, right out there. If you are new, we actually have a little, like, gift for you. Um, or you don't have to be new, but you just have questions, you want information about something, 
come chat with me. I hopefully can answer your questions if you are asking about small groups or serve teams or anything in between. Like I said, after the service, come chat with me. I will be out there with you. Now, here is a, a lovely reminder after the restrictions from Wednesday. Please keep those masks on the entire time you're in the church building. Um, there should be an empty row in front of you and behind you um, with two empty seats in between groups of three. We just want to make sure everyone feels comfortable and safe and healthy. Let's stay healthy. So, um, yes, that's kind of the rules going forward until we'll see when. Also, after the service out in the lobby, no, sorry, um, in the parking lot, we actually have Wood Rat Cafe. They're bringing like this coffee, drink, trailer, truck, um, but they're going to be serving drinks out in the parking lot after the service, so make sure you stick around. And we're also going to be serving, not serving, selling um, for Edmonton merch. This is the last week we're going to sell that merch. It's right out here in the lobby. You can go check it out, or you can just swing by and get a free sticker. That works too. Next week, mark your calendars. Next week is a big week because it is small group kickoff for us. That's your chance to join a small group for the fall semester. You know, you'll often hear us say that, first, you need people, but people also need you. And that's where small groups come into play. So whether you join on your own or with a friend or you try a new group, whatever it is, if you want to be here next Sunday, that's when you can join. We're going to have, it's a poutine food truck. Um, we're going to have, like, games, giveaways all outside. So it's going to be good. So make sure you're here next Sunday. All right, Jeff is going to come up in a minute and speak. But before then, check out this video. Hey, Siri, what time is it? It is 8 a.m. Hey, Siri, what's the weather for today? You live in Edmonton, so it will be sunny in the morning, then snow in the afternoon, with a possible tornado overnight. Dress in layers. Hey, Siri, what happens at small groups? Small groups meet at different times throughout the week. Some groups do activities together, like sports or photography. Other groups do Bible studies together, and some groups serve together around the city. Hey Siri, what if I don't know anyone? That's okay, you will meet new people. Hey Siri, will I meet the love of my life? Why are you asking me? Ask your mom. Hey Siri, what if I don't like it? Just go. You could use another friend. You talk to me a lot. Hey Siri, set a reminder to join a small group on Sunday, September 26th. You got it. Now, let me tell you a story about myself. I want to share, uh, you know, I've only been working here since about January, well, literally since January, and maybe you've come a little more recently to the project and you don't know who I am. So I want to tell you a little bit about my story, and it fits in with what we're talking about today. But I want to share a story about my friends and the influence that they had on me. When I was 14, I went to a youth camp. And if you've been around church, you probably went to some kind of a youth camp and Maybe you, even if you weren't in church, you went to a, a non-church related youth camp. And we were out at this place at Sylvan Lake. And, you know, it's like any other youth camp. It's basically just trying to get a date, get people's phone numbers. This was pre-Facebook, pre-Instagram. Like, this was when something called Nextopia was the biggest thing, and MSN Messenger. So we were all trying to get each other's MSN Messenger hotmail emails. Anyways, you're always trying to impress all of the girls if you're a guy. And that was kind of the thing. You're always trying to, like 
you're playing bump with everybody, you're trying to win because, you know, nothing will get you a date like winning at a casual game of bump, apparently. That's what we thought. But we go so hard, never wearing any sleeves, even though we hadn't really hit puberty yet, so we had no muscles or anything. It was just really uncomfortable for everybody. It's a really awkward phase of life. But every opportunity that you had, you would try and show off. Well, one day, kind of like Siri's video there said, as you happens to be common in Alberta, a major storm hit the camp. We were all inside in the middle of the afternoon. It was around just after lunchtime. And this wasn't just like a rainstorm. This was like another level storm. This was one of those supercell ones that you really look forward to. And when they're happening, you're like, this is awesome. But then you realize like things are being destroyed by the wind. You're like, this is so cool. But like someone's house is blowing away at the same time. And this was not your normal supercell storm. This was huge. I found out later it actually went through Sylvan Lake, hit West Edmonton Mall. The rain, power of the rain, hitting the, the roof above the ice rink, shattered the glass and flooded West Edmonton Mall. Like this was huge and a tornado actually landed somewhere from this storm. But what happened was this guy came in. There's always that one kind of sketchy kid right at camp. And he comes running in. He's like, everyone, listen, listen. You gotta come outside. You gotta come outside. The, the ground is moving. Like, yeah, right. This kid's always saying crazy stuff. Like, what's really happening here? But we went outside, and I'm telling you, the ground was moving. Like, mounds of moving, like, it looked like people or, or like monsters were crawling around under the grass in the field, and it was moving everywhere. And we're like, what is going on? Like, this, this isn't, this is particular. This isn't normal. And so we're like, this. That's, that's strange, but probably like something to do with the storm. But we're on the top of this hill. The building we were eating in was on top of a large hill going down towards a gravel road. And at the top was this water fountain coming out of the top of, like, the top of the hill. Going, and the water's flowing down. So my friends are like, and all the guys who I was there with are like, hey, we should slide down that. Yeah, that'd be cool. We're 14. Of course we're going to slide down the mud slide. What else are we going to do? So don't change and all the girls are around so like obviously they're going to be super impressed by how we slide down the mud because that's how you that's impressive in our mind for some reason so we start going first guy goes he's like all right come on let's go he just like dives down and it was honestly looked kind of fun like it, it was pretty impressive and then we're all trying to see who could go the furthest down who could go the like slide the furthest and like win the race that we just in vented for some reason and I remember I was like you know what I'm gonna do it I'm gonna win this it's probably the fourth or fifth time down so I took a huge running start full steam and I went full Superman like just let it all out straight across I hit the ground big braces on this giant teenage man child flying down this hill mud flying into my braces mud all over my hair I remember I came down I cut myself open pretty bad on the gravel on the way down and on the way up we're all high five and it's like yeah did everyone see what I just did feeling really cool feeling like we're like just the kings of the world and then the groundskeeper came out he's like get out get out of that mud that's not mud the septic tank had blown And in that moment, this dire realization had come over me, this wave, like a warm breeze of anxiety, panic, embarrassment. And suddenly I didn't expect that the girls were going to be all that impressed by me swimming in human fecal matter. And the sickness took over. And we ran to the lake as fast as we could, embarrassed, and tried to wash ourselves off and get our braces cleaned out and our hair. And get it was just disgusting. Your friends and your community will impact the way you live your life, the th decisions you make, and who you become. And I want to talk to you a little bit about my experience actually with church. Because this church, not just church, but this church saved my life. And I don't say that to be extreme. I don't say that to be, you know, just like make a shock statement. I can honestly say that. Like, it's not like I was about to die and the church came in and literally stopped that situation. But I didn't grow up connected to church really at all. 
Um, without getting too deep into the history of it, my family grew on both sides kind of met, my parents met on a commune in the mountains, log cabins, long skirts, religious base, basically a cult, like give us all your money type stuff. Um, and that's where they met, which is not, I always grew up thinking that was like a normal thing, but like, guess it's not. They met up there. My dad ended up running away when he was around 16 years old, ran away to Edmonton, met up with my mom who was still down here, dated for a while, got married. But as you can imagine, within that type of situation, there was a lot of hurt. There was a lot of abuse that happened in that situation. It was all done in the name of Jesus, not in the real name of Jesus, but was done in the name of the Bible and God. So there's this complicated relationship with religion and with Jesus and with church. We never were against it. We actually tried to go to a bunch of different churches, but we never really landed, right? Like we just never really landed where we where we felt comfortable, and I can understand why that is. My parents were doing the best they could. They wanted me to know that there was something more to life and that they believed in whatever this Jesus and this God thing was, that there was something there. But you can imagine the baggage. You can imagine the, the pain. You can imagine how hard that would be and how complex that relationship would be. So we never really stayed anywhere for very long. It's easy when you've been hurt to find every flaw in every situation. And I don't blame my parents, actually. I feel they, in some ways, are totally justified in their, in their relationship with that. But to be honest, it didn't just stop with them. I kind of picked up through conversation. I picked up through different um, just, just experiences and hearing them talk. And just you pick up things from your parents. So I actually, even to this day, probably more than I let on or more than I'm even aware of, I kind of have this natural, cynical, pessimistic perspective on almost everything like I'm telling you I don't know if you grew up in church if you didn't that's fine but if you grew up in church uh, and even in children's church there was like songs and the odd time my parents would bring me to children's church and I remember this one specific moment where they were singing this song you know like fun happy kid stuff and like there's this one I don't understand the theology or the reason behind it but it was like hip 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 hippopotamus hip hip hooray God made all of us poetry. It's poetry. And I remember there was this one big kid who actually is now my dentist, believe it or not. I was just hanging out with him the other day and we talked about this. And he, he was standing there going hip, 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 and just hitting other kids as this was the motion. But you're not supposed to use your, your hippopotamus arms as a weapon. But he was. And I was like, this is dumb. I don't want anything to do with this. I'm out. Didn't really like church. And I think that that's actually fed into me more than I ever could fully understand because it kind of came through the relationship and the complexities of my understanding of, of organized religion and church through the experiences that my parents had. But thank goodness God had a plan for my life. Now listen, I was, I'm a big boy. I am. I, uh, puberty has allowed me to use that to, for advantages in sports like football. Anything that isn't related to jumping or speed, I was, it was good. But it wasn't always that good. Because I grew up, frankly, through elementary and junior high as the fat kid. I was quite fat. I was quite heavy, chubby, whatever word you want to use. Um, and it was not fun. I was relentlessly bullied. Relentlessly like, I was scared to go to school. I would have anxiety. We didn't really talk about anxiety or anxiety attacks back then in, like, the 90s. But, like, I would, the night before, just feel swathes of anxiety because I knew I was going to get beat up or I was going to get, like, just ridiculed and picked apart. And it was terrifying. I hated going to school. I hated that the, the, the friends I had had turned on me and became just bullies. It was a level of bullying that I probably am still not fully aware of the impacts that it's had on me. It still shapes me in a way to this day because I still can hear the words that those kids said to me. You know, it's kind of funny. I'm a 32-year-old giant man, and there's words that a bunch of dumb kids said to me when I was a little kid, when I was like 9, 10 years old, that still carry weight in my life. And I, I allow, you know, I'm okay. I'm not, this isn't a cry for help or anything. I'm fully aware of these things, and I've worked through them, but I still have to battle those regularly. You know, there's still, there's been situations where, I remember I was in a fitness contest. I got down to like under 10% body fat, and I still would look in the mirror and be like, man, I just, I don't look like I should. And we have to battle those problems. We have to battle those regularly. But that's how deep 
these cuts were. That's how deep the scars were in my life at this time, where I found myself feeling hopeless. I found myself just feeling burdened by every relationship in my life. My friends that I did have, which were few and far between, were starting to get into some bad stuff. We're getting in with the wrong crowd. And I remember feeling this tension of wanting to be good, but also not wanting to be lonely. Because I was, I was lonely. I remember feeling that no one cared about me, that nobody liked me, that there was no reason for me to really exist. And I'm not saying that to be overdramatic. I was never at a point of being close to hurting myself or anything like that, but I just remember being in a pit of despair. And life is pretty good now, but sometimes I look back and I'm like, man, that was awful. And I found myself at a crossroads. I found myself at a situation where I needed something and I didn't know where to go. Then my cousin, who actually also had really complicated relationships with her family and church, ended up inviting me, or t- telling her mom to tell my mom, to uh, tell me that I should go to the youth group at the church that she had been going to that was lots of fun. And her friends from school had invited her, and I ended up getting invited, and I didn't want to go because it sounded lame, like the, n- the term youth group didn't sound like that much fun. But I ended up going, and let me tell you this, I showed up to the place that is now called Hope City, ended up in this building randomly, never really been connected here at all before, and I met people that were friendly, I met people that were open, I met people that cared about me, that showed me love immediately. I remember walking away and being like, this is different. This is different than what I've experienced before. This is different than than the bullying. This is different than school. This is something I want to be a part of because I just felt like there was people that cared about me for the first time in my life. I found community. I joined a small group. And let me tell you this, that small group started going in grade 8 to this small group. And those friends, that hip, 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 hippopotamus guy, He's not just my dentist, he's one of my best friends, and he was in that small group. So many of my other friends from that small group changed the way I looked at life. They became my best friends. I've traveled the world with them. I've been in their wedding parties. They've been in my wedding parties, best men in each other's weddings. We've worked together. We've done all sorts of awesome adventures together. And it all started with a small group. And that changed my life. And I ended up eventually feeling called by God to be a pastor, and that was in my youth days, and I had a great time at youth, and it was something that just I looked forward to every week, this group of awesome friends that we would just do everything together. We played football all the time. It was just a bonding experience. But after that, I felt called to be a pastor, and I ended up going to Bible college, but that's when I got plugged in to a place called The Project. And that was 14 years ago. Started coming here. And obviously, I wasn't the pastor back then, but uh, Phil, who's now the lead pastor of Hope City, which is the, the larger church that the project is a part of, was the lead pastor at that time. And I'm telling you, the project was what I needed at that stage of life. Through all of the hardship, through breakups, through sicknesses of loved ones, through failed school, through all of the ups and downs and, and the chaos that is being a young adult, I had the project there in my life to help me navigate through it. Small groups, pastors, people that invested in my life that cared for me, a community of friends that I still talk to to this day where we could actually live life together and challenge each other. And it was a great, positive community for me. And it all started because one person, my cousin, invited me. It all starts with one invite. The exponential change, that one invite, the unbelievable value that can come, the trajectory that can be set in someone's life, and and the value that can be brought from one invite is hard to fathom. One course correction can change someone's world. And that's intense when you think about it. That's a, that's a power that we don't necessarily wield, but it's so, an influence we can have in people's lives. The question, do you want to join me at my youth group, my small group, going out for wings with my friends, come to the project, to church? That invite can change someone's life. 
And what this invite is is so much more than it's just like an invitation to come to a social gathering. It's actually a part of the fulfillment, one way that we fulfill the greatest calling, the greatest purpose that any human being can ever have in your entire life. And that is to fulfill what is called in the Bible, what Jesus calls us to, which is known as the Great Commission. And if you don't know what the Great Commission is, it's really what we're all about here at the project. It's a fulfillment of this purpose as followers of Jesus that we share the good news, that G- the good news of Jesus and that he's the answer to the most important question in life. Why do we exist, and what is my purpose? The New Testament writer Matthew in chapter 16 says this, Then the the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Now listen, if you haven't been around church before, this may be news to you. This may be a review for anyone else that's been around. But you've probably noticed when you look around at the world that humans kind of suck. Like, the world is problematic to say the least like pandemic notwithstanding we have problems and it's not just problems that will be solved by an election and by the way you should vote tomorrow I won't tell you who to vote for but you should vote go vote contribute to to that Um, but the world is in this constant state of chaos and most of us would be like you know what yeah I'm not perfect, but at least I'm not like this group of people, or I'm not like this person, or this person who I follow on social media. I'm not the worst case scenario in the world. All these people that you'd see on the news, and you kind of point out, what's the problem with the world? And you could say, this person, this group, this decision, this ideology, that's the problem with the world. And that may be true, and it likely is, but the fact is this. If I asked you, do you at all contribute to the chaos that is the world today in any way, is that true? Now, let's put it this way. God intended us to be in perfect peace and harmony and not have any sin or any brokenness in the world. But humans have chosen to disobey him. And we all have. I have, you have. This is not like a, a, there's no special club of perfect people here. We all make mistakes. We've all lied. We've all cheated. We've all st- st- stolen anything. You can think about it. Coveted. We've all committed um, atrocities in, compared to God's perfect plan and God's perfect standard. Whether we've gossiped or we've just been overly jealous or just been strategically trying to maneuver relationships for our own goals. We've all done something. I'm not saying you murdered somebody, but we've all contributed to the brokenness of the world around us in some way. We've all been imperfect. And because of that, we actually cannot be perfectly aligned with God. We can't have relationship with a perfect God because we're not perfect. But what God did was he sent Jesus. He came in the form of a man through Jesus, and he died on a cross, and he took the death that was the penalty of sin, And he fulfilled it by being tortured on a cross and being murdered when he didn't have to be. He took our place. We deserved death and separation from God eternally, forever, because we chose to rebel. We chose the chaos instead of the peace. And we do that regularly. But what God does is he never gives up on us. God never gives up on anyone. And he created this way that if we believe in Jesus, we believe that he rose again from the dead days later, that he has power over death, his power over sin, and he can make us right with God. That it doesn't matter where you've been, what you've done, the decisions you've made in the past. And yes, I'm thinking about that one that's coming to your head right now where you're like, no, I did this. You don't know what I did. It doesn't matter. Jesus can take care of it. Jesus' grace is above any decision you've made, any mistake that you carry, anything that you define yourself with. Jesus says, that's all right, I'm enough. Don't do it again, but there's forgiveness when we follow Jesus. We can be made right. That, That broken bridge can be brought back together with God, but only through Jesus. And that is the fundamental thing that we care about here at the project. We're talking about our values. We're talking about kind of our main goals, and we have four of them here at the project that kind of make up our vision, which is to see 1% of the young adults in Edmonton make a decision to follow Jesus and call the project their home. We want to increase 
the number of young adults in Edmonton who believe in Jesus. Not by screaming at them on the corner, not by being rude or doing anything like that, but by sharing the value through our actions and hopefully through our words as well with people and showing them that there is power and there is purpose and there is a reality where Jesus can change your life and you may not know it yet, but this is what you've been looking for. And maybe you're here tonight and you came as a guest or a friend or you just kind of found us online or you're listening online right now, listening to the podcast or watching it on YouTube, whatever it is, and you need to hear that tonight. Jesus is what you've been looking for. That is the thing that you've been searching forever for. You didn't know it, but this is your opportunity to meet the person, the God that created you and that wants to just see your life have so much value and purpose. The next few weeks, we're going through all of these things. And like I said, frankly, this is the reason that we exist. We exist to tell people and share the greatest news that's ever happened. That we're not defined by our mistakes. That we're not defined by the atrocities that we may feel we've done. That we're not defined by those, but we're defined by the relationship with God and the decision to follow Jesus and say, I no longer want to be a part of the mistakes that I've made, the things that have contributed to chaos. I want to choose peace. I want to choose justice. I want to choose the right way. I want to choose Jesus. And today, this may be your chance to do that for the first time. Maybe you've followed Jesus before and, you know, you've kind of fallen uh, distant from him in the past couple of years or months or it just isn't something, you had a bad experience. Tonight is your chance to be right with him again, to come back, to come back home. And it's so important. But we need to be able to share Jesus with people. And the fact is this, you will only be able to impact Jesus as mu- or people's lives for Jesus as much as he's active in your own life. If you don't know who Jesus is in your own life, you won't be able to impact other people's life for him. So you want to share the gospel. You want to be a light in a dark place. You want to share hope with a world that seems hopeless. Here's the fact. We, an invitation to the project is a great first step. That was what I needed. But one thing that you need to know is that that's not enough because we need to be able to know who Jesus is to be able to impact people's lives for Jesus. So how can you do that? It's simple, but it's intentional, and it takes work. And that is why it's so important to spend time in prayer in the Bible, serving Jesus. But if you're not spending regular time praying or talking to God, it doesn't have to be some, oh, Father, thou is thy God, and I love thou, and some, you know, Shakespearean experience. You can just talk to God. Talk to him and tell him what you need. Tell him how you're feeling. Thank him for what he's done in your life. It can be very practical. It doesn't have to be this very, very like fancy thing. It can be. If that's literally how you want to talk to God, that's how you talk, good. Go for it. But it doesn't have to be like that. And spending time in God's word, the Bible, which is God's word written down, He wrote a book for us so that we could actually know him. And every week here at the project, we go to the Bible because we know that that's the best way that we can come face to face with the person that is Jesus and know what his plan is for our lives. And this isn't just some dusty old book that doesn't have any relevance for the year 2021, but every time we turn to it, there's something that we can take that will impact our lives, make our relationships better, make our relationships with our family, our friends. It will improve our life because it is God's word. It will impact everything we do, and it will make us better if we follow it. And of course, serving is another way. If you are serving him, whether that's at the project or serving and and serving your community and loving your city. And last week, we talked about our goal of being for Edmonton and doing everything we can to show our city that we're for them and that we love them, not just in the programs that we do here at the project, but actually just in everything we do, whether we're walking down the street, when we see a need, we fill it because that's what Jesus would do. He would never ignore a need. We act accordingly, and we act in ways that shows that we love our city. Goal number two is this, and this one is what I'm pumped about because we're coming up to a connecting point next week, and it's your opportunity to get plugged into life-changing community, and that's our second goal is to cultivate life-changing community. And that comes through small groups, that comes through serving. We've seen so many friendships build through serving on teams, whether that's the host team or whether that's the tech team or whatever it is. And if you're looking to get plugged in that way, you can go go to the project, yeg.com, and find ways to serve. But even just beyond that, 
We've seen it through the hangouts after. We're going to see that tonight as we hang out outside and we have uh, coffee from Wood Rack. We want this to be a place that drives friendships and community because church is so much more than just music and someone speaking. It's a community of people, people that challenge each other. And this is really captured in a New Testament book called 1 Corinthians. A guy named Paul is writing to a church in Corinth. And that's why it's called 1 Corinthians. And it says in chapter 12, verses 25 to 27, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And that may be weird if you haven't heard this language before, but the reference to the body of Christ is that the church is like a physical body. We're a community, but in the same way that the human body, the legs can't act separately. They're not any less a part of the body than the arms. We actually b make up one greater purpose. We make up one greater one greater unit that does work, that does incredible things together. We are, can't live without each other. We need each other in so many ways. If one part is suffering, the entire body suffers. If you break your leg, your arm can't be like, yeah, it's all good, whatever, because I'm not the part of that. It impacts what we can do with our arm. We need each other to be on the same page. We need to be a part of the solution all together, unified. As the church as the project, as the body of Christ, we are equal and unified under the banner of Jesus. We do this together. When one of us falls, we all fall. When one of us falls, we all pick that person up. When one of us wins, we all win together. And that's how it works. And maybe you haven't always seen that. Maybe your experience in church hasn't been like that. You're like, Jeff, listen, I've been to church. That wasn't how it was. I'm sorry if that was your experience. I'm not going to stand here and talk about other churches or or say anything about them because any church anybody that is on the same page of sharing jesus and trying to share the gospel is our friends even amongst our differences but it doesn't mean that what happened to you wasn't true it doesn't mean that it, it didn't happen it doesn't make it right so if you've had a bad experience in church where people hurt you or where it just wasn't what we're describing here, I'm sorry that that happened. But I'm hopeful and I believe with my whole heart just in the same way that for me the project is a part of the reason I'm standing here today, not just as your pastor, but as a Christian, as a, as a husband, as a man who's just somewhat has his life together, relatively, is because of this community. The project changed my life. It saved my life. This church saved my life and it can have that impact for you too if you'll choose it community is so important community is everything because we grow together in community we arrive here we sit but if we don't work together if we don't function as a body then it's just a gathering right we need to be a part of this together we carry the weight of life together when the pandem pandemic hits you need people when we're isolated, we've realized we need people. If there's one thing that we've realized in the last year or two, it's that we need people, right? Isolation is the worst. I don't like it. Maybe you're super introverted and you're like, like my wife. She's like, I love masks because nobody knows who I am at the grocery store. I'm like, it just makes me furious to hear that. But anyways, we need to be a part of each other's lives. We need to carry the weight of life together. We need to win together. And we share the gospel. We share the good news of Jesus together. And even when things aren't good, even when we start to go astray or we start to make mistakes, that's another value of community. It says this in Proverbs 27, 17. And Proverbs is one of the books in the first half of the Bible. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. And what an awesome analogy that is. I really love this one. I constantly come back to it. Because the fact is, community isn't always happy-go-lucky. It's not always perfect. And we run into situations where in my life where I've had people have to step in and say, hey, Jeff, you know, you're not living in a way that's congruent with Jesus, or good for you even. Iron sharpens iron. We make ourselves better. We make each other stronger. We sharpen each other in, in this analogy. But the thing about iron sharpening iron is that it's not pretty there's friction have you ever seen a blacksmith or a video of somebody actually sharpening something there's friction there's heat there's sparks there's sometimes 
good conflict. We need people in our lives to make us better. If everyone just says, do whatever you want to do, it's all good, just live your truth, there's no problems with it, eventually, I know in my life, if I would have just sought after everything that I wanted, those are the times in my life when I fell into the most difficult situations, because what I want most of the time is not the best thing for me, and having friends and community and a church to help me to navigate those situations was so important to my 20s, and still is today, we never outgrow community. The most important thing in my journey was Jesus, obviously, the cross, but the community and the support that comes from that gives me hope. Hope and freedom beyond the situations I find myself in. Hope of freedom beyond my mistakes, beyond my sin. Hope that I will never be lonely like I was when I was a kid. I was, I found myself in freedom from, from my bullying from the perception of myself that left me feeling pretty valueless to be honest at that time the hope that Jesus gives us is freedom from sin and the hope that community gives us is that we'll have purpose together and that we don't have to do this crazy thing called life alone anymore so for you there might be a couple of next steps maybe you need to choose Jesus for the first time and they're going to put up on on the screen uh, a link that you can contact us with you can go to the project yeg.com slash next and we would love to get some info in your hand about what it might mean to follow Jesus if you want to follow Jesus now it's as simple as just saying a prayer to God that says Jesus I acknowledge you as God I acknowledge that you died on the cross and that I need you and I want to follow you I may not know exactly what this scenario looks like but I just know I want to turn my life around and I want to follow you with everything in my heart and you can pray that right now or you can come talk to a pastor after or any of our volunteers and we would love to have that conversation and celebrate with you because we know this without a doubt I've experienced it and I otherwise I wouldn't share it that following Jesus is the best decision you can ever make in your life and if you do that tonight congratulations I'm proud of you and maybe you need to come back to Jesus tonight and you can make that same decision to say Jesus I want relationship with you I want to come home I want to be back Freedom comes from Jesus. Freedom comes from the gospel. And we do it in community. So tonight, as you contemplate these things, I want to ask you this. What small group do you need to join next week at Connecting Point? And in what way do you need to accept freedom? And in what way can we push forward the cause of, of Jesus in our community? Are there friends in your life that you need to invite to the project, you need to share a link with, that need the freedom that comes from this? That's why we exist, to share that joy and that freedom with our community, to be for Edmonton, not just in our charitable actions, but because we know that Jesus has a plan for our city, that they need freedom from the struggles that, that they are going through, and they don't know that Jesus is the answer. So in one sense, what is the mission that you, that you want, need to be a part of? Who are the people in your life that you need to share the gospel with? What is the community you need to be a part of? And just on top of that, if you need freedom tonight from something you're struggling with, whether that's a sin or an addiction, or whether it's just freedom from anxiety, because obviously the world is kind of crazy right now. And it seems like we just can't get past this pandemic. There's an election tomorrow, and we just know that that's not going to go well on social media, no matter what happens you need freedom from that anxiety and that stress I want you to give it to Jesus tonight just even if you have to you don't have to but if you want to put your hands out and just say Jesus take this from me I need some peace I need some freedom you can do that tonight the band's going to come up and they're going to lead us in a song Thank you. 
whatever happens in work, in school, relationships, COVID, God, there's so much, but we give it all to you because you can carry it. And we lean back into your love, God, into your loving arms. You guys can go ahead and take a seat. All right, guys. Well, the night is not over yet. We want you guys to stick around, hang out. Like I said, um, I'm going to be out in the lobby at the Connect booth. Um, come chat with me if you have questions or you're new. Just come, okay? Um, also, we have, like I said, selling Edmonton for Edmonton merch um, in the lobby. Or come get a free sticker if you're into that. And Wood Rat Cafe, their truck is here out in the parking lot. So stick around. We want to see you guys. We have fire pits. It's going to be a really great night. Also, next week is small group sign up. So make sure you're here, okay? Bring your friends. It's going to be a really, really good night. Join a group for the fall semester, okay? Good. We should all do that. And Jeff did mention this. Guys, tomorrow is election day, okay? We all should go vote. Make time for it, okay? If you have no idea how to do this, that's okay. Snapchat told me today how to do it. I don't know if you guys got, like, a notification. Is Snapchat still a thing? doesn't matter. It is. Okay, I'm going to decide. You, or you can go to Elections Canada. They answer all of your questions, okay? Elections.ca, I wrote it down for you. So go vote, okay? Do it. I uh, will see you outside. We'll see you next Sunday. Have a great night, guys.